Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, and I'm very excited today because we have a very special guest on our show. It's Dr. Michelle Maidenberg, and she helps people when they get stuck in life. She has lots of different tools and strategies and techniques that she uses with her patients to help people move forward and to gain the courage to act, to help them gain what they need to move forward and to live the life they deserve. So Michelle, we are so happy to have you on the show. So why don't you tell people a little about yourself and what you do, and then we'll we'll go from there. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're it's so nice, welcome. It's so nice to meet you. Um, I have a private practice in Westchester County in New York, and I also have a nonprofit. It's called Through My Eyes, and it offers free clinically guided videotaping for chronically medically ill individuals who want to leave a video legacy for their children and loved ones. Oh, that's so, nice. Yeah, it's a free service. And actually, now we're going, um, we're trying to restructure. So I am looking, (laughs) just putting it out there. Um, I really want to offer it, you know, more vastly to more people across, you know, the United States. Um, For those, obviously, who don't really have resources, um, you know, people of low socioeconomic status. And I've had like the incredible, fortunate um, opportunity you know, like just the other week to videotape somebody in Montana, you know, somebody who really doesn't have means um, and would never even have a connection to this type of resource. Um, and unfortunately, you know, she's at, at you know, end stages of, of cancer and has six children. Wow. So she really wanted to leave this video legacy. So I, I'm really dedicated to reaching people um, again, you know, across the country. So if anybody has, you know, we, we need resources, unfortunately, to market and et cetera. So if anybody's interested, particularly uh, whether it's, you know, uh, partnering or interested in being on the board or whatever the case is, I'm, I'm open. It's it's kind of my baby. And it's something that I really want to see kind of really thrive and live past me <laughs> in my life. Um, I teach at NYU. I teach a, you know, integrating mindfulness practice into clinical practice. I, I teach that at NYU. Um, I'm also a blogger for Psychology Today. So uh, I'm up to almost, which I'm so excited, 1.5 million readers, which is amazing. And I'm so I excited did. about that. Yeah. And I read on a, like a vast amount of topics like self-help, parenting, mindfulness, um, relationships, and on and on. Um, and then I, I just published my second book, which I'll show you, but it's called Ace Your Life. Thank you. Unleash Your Best Self and Live, live the Life You Want. And Ace is predicated under acceptance, compassion, and empowerment. And it really helps to give you very, very specific kind of skills and tools to be able, it's kind of, I call it like a little bit of a roadmap. Um, And it really helps, particularly, like you said, with stuckness. Um, And then I also have a YouTube channel where I offer weekly guided meditations on all different topics again. So I'm really trying to help, you know, public service. Let's put it that way. (laughs) It's really important to me that people really get the help they need. That's wonderful. You know, I feel like so many people in life, you know, it it depends on your personality and your characteristics, but even people who are strong individuals, strong-minded individuals, sometimes we get to a point and I always call it like the pot of boiling water. You know, you can only put a, a, a you know, a flame under a pot of boiling water for so long before the water kinds of boils over. And sometimes we get stuck in life and we just don't know how to move forward. We just, we, we get to a point where, you know, it could lead to anger, frustration, depression, and, you know, it could, you know, even lead to suicide for some people because people sometimes, you know, they, they, they run into obstacles in their life and they just don't know how to move forward in life. And I think it's important that people learn different tools and techniques on when they do run through obstacles because we all, everybody has obstacles in our lives. We all encounter obstacles, but it's learning how to endure those obstacles and how to actually move forward. What would be some suggestions that that you have for people who have, you know, a lot of obstacles, you know, and kind of life feels like a roller coaster, or they feel like they're dragging their feet every day. What would you mm-hmm. suggest to those people that might be beneficial? So that's my whole book. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big task to answer that, but I'll try my best. Okay. Um, you know, what I do in my book, and I'll, I'll just say it because I think it's important to recognize is there are real barriers Okay, so if you feel stuck, there's a reason for it. You're not just making that up. And it's not intrinsic just to you. This is like a 
national like like phenomenon that happens amongst all of us. We all feel stuckness. Yes. You know? And I think it's important to normalize that because, you know, we have this expectation that life is supposed to be a bowl of cherries, you know, mm-hmm. and that everything's supposed to go the way we expect it to. And, you know, just an example, I see a lot of, for example, um, high school seniors that are going off to college, right? So now everybody's getting their acceptances or, you know, like by May 1st, everybody kind of knows where they're going, but I can't even tell you the amount of disappointments, right? Because rejections and all these things that these kids have worked all their lives so hard, right? Yeah, With oh, definitely. And, and in their wildest dreams, they wouldn't expect to be, to have this disappointment. And it's like literally like hitting them with a bat, boom, you know, yeah. and they fall apart. They literally fall apart. You know, I had this kid, uh, just as an example, she was trying to get into a certain school and her sister went there, is going there actually. She's a senior. And she happens to have better grades than her sister. She happens to have like better, like after school, she has like better standardized exam, like scores across the board. And she got rejected. She got rejected. Now you can only imagine the reaction, right? And it's like, why me? You know, I'm a victim, but no life that's life. Like it's not going to always go our way for whatever reason. Right. You know, we may be the best candidate, like applying for a job and we may get rejected just because, you know, the the boss who um, interviewed us, like we remind them of their, their niece that they don't like. I don't know. Yeah, you know, exactly. I'm just saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's just not going to always work out. And we have to be able to be resilient. We have to be able to be accepting and recognize that we're strong enough and we're resilient enough to get through anything that comes our way. And yeah. that's where we that is what happens is we end up getting so with our expectations and our attachments and our victimization and our labeling ourselves and the self-deprecation. And then we lose sight of all of that and we flatline. Yeah. We flatline. We get helpless and hopeless and depressed and anxious and fearful and on and on and on. And then that kind of shuts us down. It just shuts us down and we, and we can't make movement. We just like literally. So you know, the way that I broke it up in my book, because I, I really believe that you need to have acceptance, compassion, and empowerment in order to thrive. Like that's what it takes. Definitely. A hundred percent. And what I did is the way that I broke it up is I did like the first chapter talks about our thinking, because we really need to understand our neurobiology. We need to understand the way our brain functions. And most people don't, I can't even tell you, I spend time in my sessions just doing like a psychoeducation on explaining the neurobiology of our brain. And yes. people look, and they're like what like people are don't realize what goes on in their brain and how it's wired right you know and then the second chapter talks about our values because all of my work is really about decision making based on your values not your thoughts or feelings you know and then then I break it up into acceptance compassion empowerment but the first chapter of each I talk about the barriers what are we up against both in our brain and our mind physiologically socially and otherwise right because of our nature nurture and otherwise yeah you know and that we really need to work hard like yeah and I, and I say to people have you ever really like accomplished anything without like something that was really important to you without working hard like what like tell me what it is and then they think about it, like not really I'm like so why should life be easy I'm like hmm? you know exactly oh yeah. oh yeah I guess I need to work a little bit you know or the biggest piece that comes up most of the time is avoidance. I see a lot of avoidance and the, it's really the avoidance of ourselves. Yeah. You know, when I say ourselves, it could be the characteristics, you know, that we don't like in ourselves, right? Oh, Those hundred percent parts of ourselves that we're trying to kind of distance from, because we don't want to see it. We don't want to know about it. You know, yeah. we don't want to pull. It could also be the avoidance of our emotions you know, our negative emotions because, and I, I did a Ted talk, um, you know, circumventing emotional avoidance. And it speaks to that. Like we are constantly in this cycle of avoiding our negative emotion for so many, again, so many reasons, because yes. look at social media. I mean, I don't even have to go further than that. No, <laughs> you know? don't. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we're constantly avoiding and, and for, for most people, it makes sense because when we have negative emotions, it affects us. It affects us yeah. viscerally in our bodies, right? Mm-hmm. It affects us in our mind. It affects us in terms of our decision-making, our behavior. It can affect us, I should say. It can affect us. 
So when it's, it's very uncomfortable and our oh, brain yeah. is able to avoid discomfort and danger. Yeah. So we're, gonna, it, we're, we have a natural capability and a natural tendency to avoid our negative emotions, oh, but that's actually what gets us closer to our authentic self. So we're working up, you know, against ourselves. Yeah. Um, so there's so many variables, you know, that I talk about in the book and just that I teach, you know, people I work with, I have, so I always like to use examples cause I feel like they're so poignant. And I was yes. talking to, I was talking to somebody yesterday. So I love, I, the work that I do, I love so much at my core because I love when people kind of circle back to me and they're in a different place and they're ready to work. Yeah. And I, so many people like that because I see them sometimes in high school or even like middle school. So this kid that that I'm talking about, I saw her in in I think it was middle school, and she avoided me like the plague. <laughs> <laughs> her parents had to force her to come see me. She came very like reluctantly and belligerently, and like gave me such a hard time. Whatever, right? But she was right. struggling, you know? and and. It, what I did for her back then was really focus on anxiety because anxiety was definitely an issue that got in her way and, and didn't go into anything too deep because she just wasn't in that place. And right. so I did, I helped her with anxiety and she, you know, made improvements, et cetera. And of course I haven't heard from her in like years and now she's in college. That's she's awesome. in college. She circled back to me and, you know, you know, prompting some, some things are going on right now that are percolating that she feels like she wants to work on. And I, so I had a session with her yesterday and, you know, again, that, it, that, that like kind of avoidance and the resistance kind of shows up, but it shows up more as kind of a protective shield. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you can see that she becomes, you know, so uncomfortable when she's talking about kind of her deep emotions. Um, so at the end of the session, I said to her, I said, you know, I am so proud of you. I said, I can't even tell you like how meaningful it is to me that yeah. like you're sharing your deep thoughts with me. I said, do you remember? And I, I brought back, do you remember when you used to see me? Do you remember when you used to see me in middle school? And she was like laughing. She was like laughing. I said, you avoided me like the plague. Like if, if I had my window open, you'd probably throw me out the window. So she, <laughs> she started cracking up. So I said to her, so she goes, so she looks at me and she goes, I was a very difficult child. I was such a difficult child. And I, and I said, I looked at her and I actually like welled up with tears because I felt so sad that she saw herself that way. Yeah. And I, and I looked at her and I said to her, no, you weren't difficult. You were protective. Yeah. You need, you needed to be that way. Right. Because of the way you felt in your family, you didn't feel like you were hurt. Yeah. You didn't feel like you were considered. Mm -hmm. You were, you were just going, listen to me, hear me, you yeah. know, you were just being protective. You are a great child. You're an amazing, incredible child. Right. And she just, she didn't even know what to say to me. Like you could tell that like, she just, I mean, but you could see the warmth, like she yes. warmed up. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, and it was just such a moment, you know, of connection between the two of us, you know, and, she, and you could see that she was feeling accepting by me, you know, right. But that's, but that's what it's all about. It's about the relationship. It's about the connection where people get so stuck, right? And they're fear mm -hmm. fearful of being vulnerable and being connected and like what that means and the risk taking and just everything. And I said to her, I said, you know, this stuff, unfortunately, is probably going to show up in your intimate relationships in your future. Yeah. And like, I don't want to see that happen to you. Right. I want to see your growth so that you could feel so positive and connected and thriving in your life. And I said, I think you're coming into this in a different place now. Yeah. And she said, I, and it was just like, you know, it was like so, so magical, like really, it was so powerful. So bottom line is, <laughs> out of, you know, just if we had to summarize everything I just said, is it's really getting into a place where you're really willing to look at yourself in a deep yeah. meaningful way and being open to whatever comes up, whether comfortable or uncomfortable right? and work through that in in a very I'm gonna say incremental yeah systematic way and I help people do that of course you know because yeah. we can't deep dive into it because our body and our mind won't allow that to happen no. you know yeah and then yeah. also to really be open to skills and to making changes and to challenging oneself you know and to understand what we're up against so that we a are cognizant of it when it comes up 
and that instead of letting it t- like really encapsulate and you know capture our minds and our body that we're able to make the changes that we're meant to right you know and i believe i believe you know and i i i say this in my conclusion chapter but i believe we're all sculptures you know like we're we're pieces of marble right okay now, if you look at a piece slab of marble, it's pretty, you know, and it's all colorful and beautiful, but it's just a piece of marble. Yeah. But once you sculpt it, right, and you have an image and you cultivate it, it is magnificent and its essence, right? You could see its essence. Yes. We're, we're, we're all that. We just need to uncover. It's just, and actually the word that I use in my title and I use it very purposefully is unleash. Yeah. Because I believe it's in, it's within each of us. And there are things that get in the way that kind of gloss over it or cover it up. And I'm talking about from the person who does kind of ghastly things, you know, yeah. to, to whoever. And, you know, it, it's interesting because it, there's a lot of studies, obviously, on crim- criminals and other things. But there was a, a study that was done, you know, where they went into the jail, you know, the, you know, the jail system. And and uh, and actually, there was a video about this. And uh, the therapist went in and, she, you know, it's based on the ACES study, which is, um, I don't mm-hmm. know if you know anything about that, uh, the ACES study, but it really looks about how our trauma affects, you know, us on a, on a really physiological level. Right. And, and they ask, you know, how many of you come from a family of violence? Please step forward. How many of you come from a family where, you know, um, you know, you were the victim of abuse, you know, please, yes. please et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what do you know? Like literally the entire prison, and I'm not even kidding. It was like, wow, blew your right. mind. Everyone was congregated towards the, the center. Yeah. We don't, we're not born this way. <laughs> no, but when you think about it, you know, when you, when you come from, like, I think it's over 70% of, of families are dysfunctional. And when you live in a dysfunctional environment, that's what you're trained to think and act and you don't realize the abnormalities of it because that's what you're surrounded by. So in a sense, that's their norm, even though it's not normal in their eyes, it is because that's all they know. Well, and I want to add a really important piece to this because I am all about the mind and body. Mm-hmm. We're talking about our nervous system, right? We're talking about our brain or the physiology of our brain and our mm-hmm. neural networks in our brain. Right. Okay. That's what becomes kind of typical, normal in our brain and our body. Yeah. Okay. So like when somebody's used to a lot of drama, yeah, okay, and intensity and risk taking and, and just all of this stuff, that is actually how we're wired. We become wired that way. Exactly. It's, even, it's 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 actually an automatic response. Right. That just we click into. Yeah. And by the way, I know that happens to me. Like, like I, I am very familiar and comfortable with anger. Yeah. Most people aren't, most people aren't, but I am like, right. I, I'm like, so okay with it. And I love it because it's like riveting and it makes me yeah. feel powerful and it's like fun, you know, and whatever. Right. Like I've learned, I've had to learn that like, that's not what's going to get my needs met. That's mm-hmm. off-putting to many people, right? you know, and also when you're, it's not really being my authentic self because it's a protect it's more protective right rather than being relational mm-hmm. and i've had to like really really study and learn like why is that part of like my automatic response yeah how did that happen you know and also how could i rework that so that i'm actually being relational and i'm actually getting my needs met and i'm actually being my authentic self exactly and by the way, that's not easy because my brain has been wired that way. I'm 52. It's been wired that way since I'm a little kid. Right. You know, we're talking 50 years of wiring here. Yeah. Well, it's a regimen. It's become part of you. You know, this is a daily behavior that you installed in your brain, in your body, in your mind. And that's what you're used to. And it becomes habit forming. So when it becomes a habit, as you know, any habit is very hard to break. Mm-hmm. And the more that you do something, the more, right, it becomes more pronounced. Yes, 100%. If you, pra- if you practice anger, you'll be more angry. If you practice kindness, you'll be more kind. That's just the way it is, right? Yes. Like you practice math, you'll get better at math. <laughs> so like- the, the great thing is, is that if you realize these faults, 
and you actually work on them, you can break the habit and you can break the, the, the barrier. So you can change yourself. I think the biggest thing is like we go back from our beginning of our conversation is the denial. People don't want to accept that there's an issue or there's a problem because once they accept it, that means they have to do something about it. And the fear of change. So many people fear change, whether they're, they're thinking, you know, what's going to happen if I change? Who will I become? Will I like this person or the work involved? You know, some people might not want to have to work to change themselves, you know, and that fear takes over. And so how do you break that fear and how do you, you change that? So two things you said, which I want to piggyback which is really important so the fear of change so again i'm going to go back to the body and mind i have to yes this is um our mind and body is going to resist that mm -hmm. so we I, I have to say that because when you say i am resisting it's not you right it's not you michelle right it's right. not you Stacey. right my brain yes it's my brain and when I talk to people, I don't refer to them as Michelle. I say, your brain really doesn't want to like take that on. Wow. Look, I like look. that. Wow. And, and by the way, I have four kids. That's how I talk to my kids. I'm like, gosh, your brain is really like, like married to this right now. It doesn't want to believe anything <laughs> else. It just, it doesn't want to believe anything else. That's all it wants to believe. Yeah. You know? I had an incident this past week. I mean, it was, it was fascinating. I have a, my youngest is 14. She's a female. And um, she was t sitting there like, and telling me about her friend who like all of a sudden is being like drama and like being nasty and not being a good friend and going on and on and on and on. And I know something about this girl mm -hmm. and I know that there's a lot of changes going on in the family right now. Right. I, and I said to her, I said, Hmm, that's one way of looking at it. Maybe there's other considerations. Maybe if you expand, right? Like one way is looking, she's not a good friend and she's changed and she's going to always be that way. And Right? Yeah. Maybe something's going on for her that's causing her to like shift in some way. And maybe right. it's worth being compassionate and inquiring and, you know, kind of extending and maybe giving some grace and da, da, da. What do you know? Fascinating. Uh, two days later, she's texting me. Ah. She was like, Oh my goodness. You know, she told her friend and it was sort of the thing that I thought yeah, that was going on for her. And, and, and she's, and I said to her, you know what, what a good life lesson, yeah. like how we, how we judge people and how we get ourselves in a corner because all we're seeing is the behavior yes. and the side of the person and what they're going through and what could be going on for them you know, and we get so caught up in it and we have all these thoughts and feelings about it and they're not even real or, or, they don't even make sense. And I think that's society's biggest problem, the stigmatism of just looking on the outside and really not looking, well, if I was walking through their shoes, maybe I would look at this differently or re react differently, or I would have some more compassion towards this person. Instead, they're just looking on the outside and then not really thinking about what this person might be going through and then trying to visualize if I was that person, how would I feel just to get a gist of what they're going well, through. Well, it's, it's perpetual curiosity. I always say, yeah. you want to ask from perpetual, always curiosity, like curiosity. I, like, I wish it was like, kind of like literally tattooed on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really do. I wish that I would be behaving that way from like, so going back to what I said before. So what did, what did I tell my daughter? I said, look where your mind went to. Right. Your mind was trying to convince you that she's a horrible friend, right? Why? Because your mind's trying to protect you. Yeah. It doesn't want you to get hurt. It doesn't want you to get rejected. So it's trying to convince you, you need to stick up for yourself and you need to protect yourself from this horrible friend. Right. I said, look, look what your mind did. Yeah. So I take it out of her because she's not a bad person that was judging her friend. It right. was her mind that was protecting her. A hundred percent. So it's a lot more empowering to kind of, if you, if you kind of frame it that way, it's yeah. a different approaching yourself and other people, you know, so that's one. And when you say about fearful, right? So it's our mind and body that does that automatically, like I said, but I think also we have to think about our compensatory strategies and we have to think about what value and what positivity and benefit we're getting out of our behavior. Yes. We're doing it for a reason. Okay? Right. We're doing it for a reason. If it was so horrible, we wouldn't be doing it. Okay. Exactly. So 
when I'm angry, I'm getting something out of it. I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling powerful. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling like I'm going to be heard. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling all of those things. And I, unfortunately, that was like an adaptation when I was younger because I felt so out of control and I felt so helpless. Yeah. So that's what helped to ground me. And guess what? It kind of made me into the person I am today. Right. right? Yeah. Like I'm an ambitious person. Uh, you know, I consider myself a successful person. I have, I consider myself having like positive, you know, confidence, et cetera. Yeah. And I've worked on it, of course, and I continue to work on it. Um, but if I didn't have that ad ad adaptation and I would have just been helpless, hopeless, depressed, I probably would have ended up on drugs and like, who knows what, you know, right, exactly. Like, that's what helped me survive and thrive and push through and, you know, accomplish everything that I had. So like, how readily am I willing to give that up? Right. That's scary. You know what I mean? So yeah. when I say barriers and fear, like, so I don't tell people you need to give that up fully and, you know, fully, because that's not even realistic. Like, right. so I could, when I talk about the anger, I'm not really what I, how I reframe it is I don't want to like exist and interact with anger. I want to interact and exist with assertiveness. Yes. I like that. Because yeah. mm -hmm. that's a very different, that's a very different way of approaching things. 100%. I could still, I could still be assertive, but assertive means that I am thinking about my behavior and other people's behavior. Right. Exactly. When I'm aggressive or angry or frustrated, I'm not focusing on anybody else. No, that's the truth. I am focusing on myself and really primarily on myself because I'm so activated in my feelings and I don't really want to be that way anymore. Right. Like that's, just, that's just not my authentic self who I want to be, you know? So, yeah. so, uh, you know, basically what I'm saying, you know, when you talk about the fear, there's so many things that like kind of encapsulates yes. that, the stock. And, yeah. you know, I just, I just gave you a, little, a couple of tidbits, but you yeah, can yeah. see what we're up against. Right. I feel like, you know, from working with clients, I feel like a lot of times too, is that people repress their emotions. And, you know, if you repress your emotions long enough, you can become a zombie. And then you, you know, you feel like you, you don't know who you are as a person and you don't know how to react. And mm -hmm. you're kind of like lost because you don't, you know, you're not in touch with that mind, body, and soul, you know, because it's really when you have that connection with your brain and your body and your, and your soul, you really have a really good understanding of who you are as a person, what your needs are and what you really have to do. And that gives you, I think the strength and the courage to move forward and actually make your dreams a reality. But for people who repress their emotions, it's very hard because they're just, they don't know who they are in a sense, you know, and what would you suggest to those people? How would you suggest overcoming and really get in touch with those emotions? Yeah. And that my Ted talk is actually all about that. Cause I talk about like why we were repress. Yeah. So repression is, is again, is another defense. Mm -hmm. so it's another defense. So like all of these adaptations and coping mechanisms yeah. are in order to survive. Right. And we learn them at a very formative age, yes. you know, and, and it's, it's, it's actually like such an incredible, like, you know, to have such appreciation for that part of us Yeah, that our bodies and our minds know what to do in order to help us like thrive and, and to protect us, yeah. which is like, incredible. like it's, it's so, it's such a like incredible way um, of like supporting us if you think about it right yeah however the problem is is we take those adaptations and those coping skills with us as we develop yeah and often we don't need them anymore that's right part of the problem. so yeah. repressing feelings is a wonderful thing because you know you probably had some point in your life either the feelings were too overwhelming, you know, or you were confused or whatever the case is. And the only way that you learn to kind of, you know, make it or break it was to dull out or yeah. to disassociate or to disconnect, whatever word you want to use, like right. we all, you know, feel. And I know for myself, just, I know it's so fascinating. I am the most like ambitious person, probably, you know, when you can meet and people, that's what I'm kind of known for. Um, but there are times like when I definitely could almost feel numb, like I could feel shut, shutting down, Yeah, mm -hmm. almost paralyzed, like right. literally where like, I feel like I can't move my body. Like, I feel like I just can't move. 
Yes. You know, and it could be like answering an email. It could be like something innocuous. That's like so easy to do, but I just right. don't feel. And I know when that kicks in, I know right away that there's just something going on underneath, yes. you know, whether I'm triggered or whether or activated or whether, you know, something's getting kicked up or, you know, I, I, I feel it right away. I know yeah. it, but I also appreciate, and I could recognize that probably when I was younger, you know, and things would just get too overwhelming and, you know, there's so much so many things going on for me, like when I was younger, right. That that's what I probably did. I probably yeah. like connected when I needed to, Definitely. but if I, do, if I do it today in my adulthood, not so great. Right. Yeah. Not so great. Um, so another example is like, I know, listen, I have a teenager, right? Like I have three older boys and she's my youngest, but like, especially with her, cause she's a girl when she rejects me, cause she's a teenager, it happens yeah. all the time. <laughs> and I know it. I know it cognitively. I know it developmentally. I know all about child development. I'm like so aware of it, but it's my child. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm a human being and I'm a human being and a mom. And I always want to be loved and accepted. So yes. like all of us, right? So when she rejects me automatically, it's so fascinating. I what comes up for me right away is I want to reject back. Right. And I feel it. I feel like angry. I feel frustrated. I feel cold. Yes. I feel removed. I feel even like sadistic in some ways, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And I have to really watch that. I have to really watch that because if I act on behalf of that, it could be so hurtful to her. And yeah. again, you know, is that really meeting her needs? And then also, is it like lending to our relationship? Absolutely not. You know, because well, it's, it's just great that you could actually realize that and then take a step back because, you know, what it is, is that as a mother, you sacrifice your life for the children. You do, you know, you go to all lengths. So it's your emotions that are actually taken over and, you know, and then right. your brain connects with your emotions. Like I did this and I've sacrificed this. And all of a sudden, you know, it's not, you're not looking at it from a realistic point of view anymore. You're letting your emotions actually, you know, lead the way. And that sometimes can be very dangerous. That's right. That's right. So I, and I don't want to be driven from that place. I want to be driven from my values, you know, yes, right? exactly. So, so I have to be really, I have to watch that, you know, and again, I'm not perfect. Like who right. is, no one sometimes is. I may say something or do something that like is not in line and I have to apologize afterwards, mm -hmm. whatever the case is, you no, know? yeah. um, but it's me human. And, I, and, and then I explained to her like what was going on for me or like why I might've reacted that way or like, what that triggered for me. I do. I like explain like, yeah, when I was a little girl, da da da, you know, if it's appropriate, of course. Yeah. Um, and I and I explain that to her. So, you know, we, you know, we are, you know, we're impacted by our history. We're impacted by our society. We're impacted by things we're exposed to. There's so many variables around us that impact yes. who we are and how we function. Yes. That we have to, we literally have to be in touch with ourselves. And, you know, the ability to disconnect is a good one when you needed it. But as an adult and as we age, like we really want to be relational. I mean, there's yeah. tons of there's tons of studies again about how people who are in functional relationships and connected relationships actually live, you know, in terms of mortality, mortality, they live longer lives. Like it's yes. a fact. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the stress, 70% oh. of stress can, you know, cause illnesses and cause disease. And, 100%. you know, that when you have communication is key, when you're able to actually communicate, that stress isn't there, and the bond grows. So it's just like, a, you need that as you grow. Yeah. So we when we disconnect from ourselves or others, we are, we're actually hurting ourselves, you know. Right. And so, you know, when we talk about disconnecting, like you said, you know, it's part of understanding what happens when you disconnect right in our bodies again in our bodies because it happens in our bodies what happens in our minds how we think about things how we feel and then yeah. how we're inclined to behave mm -hmm. so like I said with the example I gave with my daughter I feel it in my body I feel rageful I feel like the stream of rage like yeah like like like, like persever you know like that's kind of streaming through my body yeah. You know, I feel the shutdown. I literally feel a kind of icy and this coldness come over me. And then I feel kind of the rage where I want to like act out, you know? And then if I really go underneath that, it's really sadness and disappointment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's sadness, disappointment, because I love my daughter so much and I want to be connected to her so badly. And I fear 
that we're not going to be connected and da, 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 right? Right. So yeah. When I speak from that place, I'm gentler, I'm kinder, I'm more connected, I'm more loving and on and on and on and on, right? And I don't always get it right, but I try my best, you know? Yeah. And, and she may not be open to hearing it in that moment either. Right. And that's okay too. So I will kind of circle back, exactly. you know, I'll circle back. and, you know, my hope always, which, which I really, I give my, my kids like the bandwidth, you know, I give them space. Right. Mm-hmm. But the beauty, which, which I found in my relationship with my kids, which I appreciate so immensely is they circle back to me, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like I believe in my heart, you know, and I know that when they need me or they want to connect or they need something like they do circle back to me. Yeah. That felt, feels so, so like pleasurable and rewarding, you know, it's like, definitely. Yeah. I'm their person, you know, like, wow. Yeah. It's like, so cool. Like that's, that's what I live for, you know, like, Oh, a hundred percent. It would be better than that. (laughs) It's true. It's so, so, so true. You know, and I, I think it, it's, you know, respect is also a very big thing. You know, when you give respect to others and you show kindness to others, you know, it goes a long way, you know, and accepting uh-huh. others, you know, for who they are and not being judgmental towards others, letting people have to realize that people, each of us are our different individuals with different mm-hmm. interests and different likes and different, you know, like you said, a different brain are, you know, we're all triggered differently. We might have a brain, we all might have a brain, but it, everyone's wired a little bit differently and that's what makes us so unique but it's accepting each other and and being kind to each other and just because someone mm-hmm. might like the color blue and you might like the color red you're not going to x them out of your life you know you have to like you know be open-minded and really show that kindness and show respect and and i think that will go a long way and that's what makes your children keep coming back is because you give them those qualities and you give them those you know you show those characteristics and i think people have to realize that in all relationships yeah. So a good way, a good way to, I guess, hold yourself accountable for that. So this is a little tip, right? Like I said, the perpetual curiosity mm-hmm. to say, how else can I see this? Yeah. Like, I don't... like that. Always ask yourself, how else can I see this? I, I always ask myself that question. That's one thing that has been golden for me. You know, the other thing is, um, cause we're all judgmental. Like that's, you know, is, is when you see somebody's behavior, Okay, that's triggering you or something, you know, that's activating you in some way is instead of saying they're this and they're that and like, you know, again, going into that judgmental space is to say, what are they protecting themselves from? Right. Mm -hmm. What are they protecting themselves from? Yes. And third thing, instead of saying like you triggered me or you caused me to feel a certain way because we do that too. Right. To say, why am I triggered? Excellent point. What's going on for me? Because nobody's behavior causes you to feel or think or do anything. You make it that you feel yourself. It's, that is all about you. That yes. is all about you. We can't blame others. Yes. Don't get me wrong. There are people who obviously, you know, abuse and gaslight and do other things. I'm not saying that. Right. right? Exactly. Um, and I'm I'm not absolving people's responsibility towards obviously their behavior. That's not what I'm saying. Right. You know? And we and we need to have enough wherewithal to kind of like, like we said, get out of relationships that are obviously abusive and so forth. Cause that's yeah. not acceptable. However, I'm just saying if we're activated in a given moment or whatever the case is, is that we need to take responsibility for our own thoughts and feelings Yes, 100%. And, and to look in to really, and sometimes you may not know that readily. Sometimes I'll have an activation and it hits me like hours later or the next day. I'm like, Oh, that, Oh my goodness. That's why that person, like, that's why I, I had that feeling. Gosh, oh, right. now it makes sense. because again, our processing sometimes is, is slow. Yeah. And the reason that happens is because we're talking about the unconscious. Yeah. Trying to get our unconscious to be conscious. And sometimes yeah. think about its layers, right? Oh, sometimes 100%. It's, it's from the conscious to the subconscious to the unconscious. So think about all of the layers there. So when it finally hits us or we finally kind of connect to it, sometimes we really have to go through a lot of processing. So we have to give our hundred percent. Yeah. I call it the baby steps because that's what really it's, it takes time. And to expose yourselves to challenges very slowly and incrementally because your brain and your body are going to reject it. Oh, 100%. 100%. 
Yes. Those would be my tips. If, you know, if we had to kind of summarize the tips, I like those tips. So many more, like if you get my book and you know, there's, uh, yeah, there's so many, so many more, you know, and where can um, people find your, your book? So it's on all, you know, major book sources. Um, and it's called, like I said, Ace Your Life, A-C-E, Your Life. And it's my name, of course. My website, which is michellemaidenberg.com. And it's two L's. Maidenberg is M-A-I-D-E-N-B-E-R-G. But all of my blogs are on there. Um, you could also, you know, kind of connect to my blog on Psychology Today. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel. You get a weekly guided meditation on all different topics. Um, but I am here to help and I, I really, I love humanity and I love Mm. helping people. And it, it just, it's, it's, there's no greater sense of reward for me, honestly. I really love people. (laughs) I feel, I feel like that's the greatest reward. There's no better feeling than being able to help another human being. I feel like that's the greatest feeling is the feeling of that accomplishment that comes when you've helped another human being. I really Um, think it's just an unbelievable feeling. mm. Yeah. Yeah. And it connects you to yourself. Yes, like, it does. The more compassion you have for others, right? And the more, com- I mean, you work on it simultaneously, right? Compassion for yourself, compassion for others. You know, what's that's what life's all about. Life is short. Life is so yeah, short. Exactly. You know? I think we all anticipate we're going to be here for X amount of time, but you never know what the next day may bring. So, you know, use every day and use it till its fullest and and really make the best of each moment you have because, exactly. you know, it, it's uh, life can be very meaningful if you, you actually do things in a, a way that is most beneficial for you, like your brain, body, and soul. Definitely. That's right. I love, that's like such a nice way to end. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's been a pleasure having you here. I'd love to have you back on the show. Maybe we can talk about some other topics because I think, you know, you have a lot to share and it'll be very beneficial. So thank you so much for coming on the show. So nice to meet you, Stacey. And I hope you have a great weekend. (laughs) Oh, you too. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.